this is an unusual way to give the message. Why did you choose to do this? On Labor Day weekend for the past almost 20 years, a gathering of my friends have come together and we uh, have what's called the Defining Men's Domain Weekend. Drumming and dancing in the wilderness, that sort of thing. It's kind of a secret society, actually. We celebrate New Year's on September 1st, and I'm always going to be away on this weekend, so I've been looking for novel ways to communicate the gospel. You couldn't find a sub, could you? Well, that's part of it. Something I've always wanted to do, too, now that we have the technology, and it is a way to get us thinking about communication. Church communication often seems one way, top down. How did that come about? Three factors, really, in church communication. Um, Everything in church is designed for the impression of power, the elevated platform, the pulpit from which the uh, preacher stands, the thrones that they sit on up front, the procession, even the robes and the stoles are designed to convey a position of power, that top-down power. And of course, we're in a television culture, which is pretty much non-interactive. People don't talk back to the television, maybe at football games. And then there's the internet, which is another kind of a system of power. Really though, what's the problem with that? I mean, it's good to be the king. Well, there's a dichotomy of the television culture, which is non-interactive, and the question authority culture, which most of us have been a part of for a long time. People are suspicious of authority without consent. Uh, Most want to know why they're doing something, and good communication is essential to trust, to building a strong relationship. (laughs) God bless you. Thank you. What kind of communication are we talking about here? I mean, you pretty much do all of the talking. Think about it. There's 168 hours in a week, 10,000 hours, 10,000 minutes in a week. I talk for 12, 15 minutes a week. That's less than 1% of our time. There's lots of other times, and it's not just me. There's internal communication that needs to happen in the church. We need to get to know one another. We need to find our gifts and our common interests and build community through connections. Well, the Prairie Church, you know, everyone knows about what you're doing. And and we have to be careful that there isn't uh, the cross the line between gossip and communication. We don't be talking about each other behind each other's backs, but rather talking to each other. A healthy church has mutual bonds. Uh, What's the old hymn? Blessed be the ties that bind. So what is the point of contact then? Well, It's back to common interest, life groups we're talking about, Uh, a kind of extended family. Uh, I think about my family in the 1830s. Most of my relatives came to the Buffalo area, and they stayed there until the 1970s. Now, my family is spread throughout the country like so many others, And, and only our common faith brings us together. But with 500 plus people in a church, you need to find subgroups, people who have common interests as well as common faith. And so we have a group for the joys of teen angst and another group, the peacemaker drum drum circle. How do these get going? You follow your passion. Many groups already exist in our church. Think about it. There's the shutterbugs, there's quilters, there's the gathering group, um, all these things that you love. We have groups that go out for the baseball game or things that you know, want to know more about or maybe just a class, Wednesday morning group that meets in the men's group, mission teams. Mission teams, those only last a week or so. How can that be a, a life group? Short term is fine, six months, a year, a week, it doesn't matter. Long term, nothing's forever in the grand scheme of things. Think about Lakewood United Methodist Church in its heyday. It was a church with 500 uh, plus people in worship every week. And there were bowling leagues and card groups and the Tiger's Den. You can't go back to what we had, but you can find new ways forward, build a new church a new extended family for people, new ways of being human. Being human? God created us human. 
and maybe not the way it's laid out exactly in scriptures, but to be human is to be connected. Jesus Christ said those who lose their life will gain it for eternity. And really, I don't think you're giving your life in a sense of martyrdom, but rather it's a shared life, and a shared life is a multiplied life. But why Lakewood United Methodist Church? Why now? Why should we mess with our status quo? We like what we've got, don't we? I think we've turned a corner. We've made hard decisions, and we're moving forward. There's energy and excitement here. We're building on, and not just physical building. We see new people, but we need to change how we recognize new people. They're not just visitors. Visitors come once and go away. These are honored guests, people we want to be in our worship home. And we have to have the ability to welcome and make them feel comfortable. We have to be able to communicate with them. Think about this. Most of the people who come here are in some sort of life trauma. Some real stress has happened in their lives that they're turning to the church and to God for an answer. Problem is, most of them have been burned by the church in the past, theologically or spiritually, even physically damaged by the church. How do we bring those people in? And The society at large has told most of the people in the culture that Christians are intolerant and hateful. For those people to come back to the church is a real effort on their part, and we need to honor that. We need to make a first impression that's critical to people in their lives. Physical, spiritual, and interpersonal impression. You are kind and generous people. And to each other, But now we need to do it to the others, the ones who are here. So we practice our sense of communication skills with each other, get to know each other, and then we can do it with strangers who come in among us. Is there anything else you want to share with us? You know, I'm dreaming of a day when we have 400 people in worship here, when we have 700 plus members actively a part of our church, when our budget is balanced and indeed offers us extra funds that allow us to reach out in new ways, when we have monthly mission teams going throughout the country, throughout the world, and Jim doesn't have to lead them all, when we feed the 5,000, not as a miracle, but as an act of regular giving, When we become a shining light that people are involved in and inspired by and are happy to invite people to. Well, thank you very much for coming in today. I appreciate your time. Well, thank you. I've been really happy to have this opportunity to share with you. Amy, would you lead us in prayer?